G'day all, it's Colin from PC TLC and thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to be looking at dual booting Linux Mint 19.3 with Windows 10 with UEFI. First of all I'm going to install Windows 10. So when I did my previous video on the HP laptop I just took the product key from under the laptop which was the Windows 7 one Put that in and that seemed to have worked pretty well but in this case I don't have a product key and we'll just select Windows 10 Pro do a custom install now I tried installing before and that didn't work some not enough disk space or something I don't know what it's going on about there because I've got plenty of disk space there I updated VirtualBox, that's, that might be the problem. So I'm just going to delete all these and show you where I am. So that's a uh, completely free disk, unallocated space. So I want to keep some unallocated space for Linux. So I'm just going to make this one 100 gig, so that's 100,000. And apply that. And to ensure that all Windows features work correctly, Windows might create additional partitions for system files. So what we have here is a recovery partition and probably the boot partition, I would think as well, or maybe this is the boot one. Um, reserved space here. So these are all in megabytes. This one's in gigabytes. So that's the one we're installing to. And this one here has 62.5 gigs of unallocated space which is where we're going to install our Linux to. So Australia for me and uh, US keyboard. No we don't want a second keyboard. Uh, we will set up for personal use. So we can sign in with a Microsoft account at this point. You can put a an existing email account in the box and put an email account in there or you can create your own account or a new account or you can um, choose offline account which gives you the opportunity to put in a local account so we'll put a name so we'll go for PC TLC now let's go for capitals and next, put in a password, confirm the password, I'll just uh, do the security questions and then we'll come back. So that's the security questions done, no we don't want to sync any devices at this point, no we don't want digital assistance and we will toggle all of these off and they're all toggled off and we'll accept that so here we are on Windows 10 we shall right click the start menu and choose disk management now as you can see here I've got unallocated space if we click on the C drive and shrink volume give it some time to um, evaluate the disk and as you can see here we've got uh, 80 gigs to play with right there now you can change that to say 50,000 which is 50 gig that's 50,000 megabytes and it shows you how much available space you can shrink right there Let's have a look at that again. So as you can see the size of the available shrink space and the amount to shrink it down to. So that amount there is the amount of unallocated space that you will have, whatever you put in there. So if I was to put 50,000, we'll have 50 gig. Probably won't bother um, creating a, a shrink volume right now. And as you can see here, I've got the 60 odd gig of unallocated disk space that was created when I was installing Windows 10 
So what we can do is we probably can, maybe I can create an eight gigabyte swap just to show you how to shrink the disk. Maybe that's an idea, so we could do that. So let's, let's shrink the volume, let's do that again. So what I'll do here is I'll put uh, 8,192 megabytes, which is exactly eight gig. And continue that, and we'll shrink that. And now, oh, well actually what it's done is it's actually added it to the, to the existing unallocated space. So um, it's not gonna be a swap, a, a swap partition at all. Well, it won't be a partition on its own. It's added it to the unallocated space. So, oh, it's even better. Well, that's an example of how to use um, shrink volume anyway, or shrink disk. So what we can do now is shut this down. So now we've got the um, boot menu of uh, VirtualBox. So we're going to use the boot manager to boot the existing disk image that's been loaded onto the uh, virtual box, which will be Linux Mint. So we'll start Linux Mint. So here we are on the desktop of Linux Mint. And the first thing you'd probably want to do um, if you're on real hardware is um, you'd have a wireless connection. And unless you're on a desktop, if you're on a laptop, you need to connect your wireless. So let's get on with the install. So English, English US. Install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi and hardware and codecs and all that sort of stuff. So what we're going to do is probably do here something else, but for, uh, but you can you can choose to install Linux Mint alongside Windows Boot Manager. Um, but what's going to happen there is it's going to share the same boot partition as Windows, and if Windows does some updates, it could corrupt that partition and you may no longer be able to boot Linux Mint. So what we're going to do is do something else. So you can see we've got our free space there that um, was created. And then we've got NTFS is obviously Windows. And uh, that's probably a sy Windows system files there. Their NTFS and boot, the Windows Boot Manager there. So we'll choose the free space that we created when we are installing Windows 10 and we'll hit the plus button and I'll create 512 megabytes partition and that will be an EFI system partition. We'll OK that. So we'll double click the free space there. You can choose the plus button or double click. Now I've got 75 megabytes there in size. You can divide it up with a system partition and a data partition, but um, I'm just gonna go with the system partition on this one. And we'll leave it at 75 megabytes. We'll go for XT4 and the mount point as root. Okay. Now you can see we've got um, SDA5 is our EFI. So the device for the bootloader installation is the EFI partition that we created. So that we choose SDA5, that's the EFI, and install now. And it'll show you partition five is ESP. So yep, it's got the ESP there, so we don't need to use Gparted. Um, it's created an ESP for us. And partition number six is the ES EXT4 root partition. Let's continue. Straight to Perth. Uh, my name will go with uh, PCTLC and PCTLC VirtualBox and choose a password and continue. And that's the installation complete. I'm going to continue testing at this point and I will shut down the system instead so I can make sure that the, uh, that the disk image has been ejected because sometimes I'm never sure whether it does eject it or not. So let's shut down the system. Shut down. And we'll go to devices, optical drives, and remove disk from virtual drive. And then press enter. That'll shut the system down. 
and let's boot that back up again and we see what we get. Hopefully we get a grub screen that gives us uh, Linux Mint and Windows 10 boot options. And there it is, Linux Mint 19.3 and Windows Boot Manager. So let's go to Windows Boot Manager first. Make sure that boots. Oh, it's preparing. I was uh, messing around with that. <laughs> I actually um, tried to boot the uh, Linux disk, uh, Linux image, and um, had to. Um, you got to press right control key and the escape button to get the uh, VirtualBox boot menu options. And uh, who wants to wait for Windows to shut down or to get to the login screen and shut down just takes way too long. So I was forcing a couple of shutdowns there. That's why it was on a boot repair. So there's the boot screen of Windows 10. We'll just log into that, make sure everything's working okay. I'm sure it is. Once you get to the boot screen, you should be right anyway. And there's Windows 10 booting, no problem at all. Just open the file manager first and make sure everything's working all right. And there we go, Windows 10, File Explorer, all's working fine, no problem at all. And let's just shut that down and do a reboot. So let's shut down Windows 10 and reboot and log in to Linux Mint. So let's start that back up again. Get our boot menu option. So there's our boot menu option. Let's boot into Linux Mint 19.3. Log into Linux Mint. Oh, and there we go. And we've also got full screen. Um, didn't expect that because I haven't. Well, I've installed um, guest editions on Windows 10. Don't know if that matters or not. But uh, yeah, we got uh, full screen straight off the bat. That's pretty handy. Now, what we can do is, uh, first of all, we'll look at the file manager. And the one question people are probably asking is, can we access Windows 10 from Linux Mint? Well, we can from here. That is the Windows 10 partition. Click on that. So what we can do here is we can go into Documents and Settings. Um, all Users. No, actually, All Users. Um, no, maybe, yep, PCTLC was my username on there. And we've got our Documents and so forth. So we can access these if we was to right click the folder and uh, make link. Well, there's actually no make link um, option there. So what we need to do there is go to edit and preferences. And we need to go to, uh, let's see, um, behavior, no. Uh, probably, uh, what have we got? Context menus. And there it is there, make link. So that gives us the right click context menu for making a link. So let's go to documents and make link. So we can make a link there and we can cut that and paste it into, I'd say home folder and paste it there. We can rename that. say rename it to uh, Windows Documents and then we double click that and there you have a quick link from Linux to your Windows partition. Don't know what all these sim links are all about. Seems to be a lot of sim links in Windows. <laughs> They're all over the place. So I don't, know, I don't know, I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm sure the documents and downloads and all that, they've got all these other sim links in there as well. Maybe that's just uh, what Linux shows up. I'm not sure. Bit unusual, but uh, I'm sure you just stick with your downloads and documents. If you're not sure, go back into your Windows and um, you could actually create, if you click on one of those folders and just create a text document and call it test, and then go into Windows and check it out. Name it anything you like. Just make sure you're accessing the right folders anyway. It's probably the best thing to do. But I'm pretty sure those documents and downloads and pictures and all that without the links are the correct ones. So that shouldn't be a problem. 
So if we go back to our home folder, there's our Windows 10 quick link. If we double click that, there's our, we are now into our Windows partition, as you can see. Um, no problem, that's all working fine. But if we um, eject the partition, and which means that's unmounted, and you can see it's unmounted, there's no eject button there. Um, we close Nemo and open it back up. You'll see that the link doesn't look genuine anymore. It uh, doesn't look the same. It says it's broken. Well, it's actually not broken. It's just that it's not mounted. The partition's not mounted. So if we click on it and mount it again, now you can see our Windows link looking as genuine as what it was when we first started because now that partition is now mounted. So that's looking as genuine as it was. So that's all back up and running. So if you get that error, you know what that error was all about. It just means that the partition was not mounted. So that was the a dual boot of Windows 10 and Linux Mint 19.3 in the UEFI mode. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.